Haven't done a video about peppered roaches in a long time. Archimandrita tessellata. And this one's shying away from the light. I just fed them. Although they have disappeared most of the food rather quickly. You can see a small nymph cruising along here on the top of this bit of cork bark. Let's uh, move it up here a little higher so we can see it. Pretty typical Liberity family cockroach nymph there. You probably wouldn't easily be able to distinguish it from a Blabberus discoidalis or any of the other genus Blabberus roaches spiky back legs there and here's one feeding over here get some nice shots of the behavior that we don't usually get to watch close up like this you can see that it has a long neck and it's capable of twisting its head around a little bit at the end of it Roaches are closely related to mantises, even more closely related to termites, are now lumped into Blattodia with cockroaches. Dictyoptera was the name of the order for both cockroaches and mantises back when I came into the hobby, or when I was a kid anyway read about roaches and mantises and field guides. This is a slice of yam that I've put in here. I tend to like feeding yams and carrots. They offer a lot of nutrition and also moisture. You can put a bunch of them in there and they pretty much look the same the next day as they did the day you fed them to mold or dry out too quickly depending on how ventilated the tank is. There can be a lot of variability in the way these roaches look. They're called peppered roaches after the sort of peppered look that many of them have. This one here is rather rather tame. I think getting a little bit old and moving rather slowly. It's also covered in a lot of coconut fiber here, and so it's really sort of difficult to see the peppered or spotted appearance of this roach. Let's get a slightly livelier one, and that way you can see, in addition to their size, they are one of the most handleable roaches in the hobby. Patterning on this one is a little bit different. You can see the pronotum up there is quite a bit paler. It's actually quite unusual. And uh, because of their size and their rather slow moving nature, this is one of the ones that I tend to recommend to educators or people who teach others about them, not just in class, classroom settings, but also who take them. Oh, you can kind of see there that it spread its wings a little bit. While they aren't capable of flying in an upwards direction, they're much too heavy bodied. They are able to glide down from a higher position to a lower one. That one demonstrated that rather unexpectedly. You can see it lifting its legs there. That's something that we see pretty commonly in males as they court the females, part of a courtship display. See this one here? I just added in some soil in addition to the coconut fiber over there. 
And so you can see that the roaches are finding some nutrients in it. They get most of the nutrition from the foods that I offer them. And in addition to those bits of yam that I put in there, you can probably see some pellets right there. These are cichlid fish food pellets. And, uh, they're quite small, bite sized. Younger roaches in the tank will be able to carry them off. This one right up here is really rather weak. I have a bearded dragon that might meet this one here when I'm done with the video. One of the downsides of having a roach die just after the one time that you open the tank, say in a week or maybe two weeks even in between feedings, if it dies, it will attract forehead flies. And if they lay their eggs on the roach, we're gonna have a forehead fly outbreak here that will be pervasive through the entire bug room for a while. And I'm always trying to keep that problem at bay and do my best to prevent it. And sometimes my bearded dragon is a willing accomplice. Well, you can see that sometimes the nymphs are not particularly handleable. See it burrowing through the substrate. The nymphs will typically burrow while the adults are more frequently out on the surface because I've been moving in the tank here quite a bit and because there's food down in the substrate now, most of them are hiding under the substrate, nibbling away. They're covered with fine hairs and so the substrate tends to adhere to them. No doubt offering a little bit of camouflage. There's a considerably smaller one right there. There may be a third the mass of this one here when they are first born. And I'll zoom in here and you can see that this one is also covered in fine hairs. right not enough light there well I guess it would make a rather awful video if well, I'm here revering these peppered roaches I dropped this into my bearded dragon tank but uh, this is a very special meal and it's a very spoiled bearded dragon Say goodbye now to one of the largest, most impressive roaches in the hobby. Archimandrita, the peppered roach. Mother peppered roach has just given birth to all these little babies. Wait, what? I'm making a video for Instagram, Sierra. Oh, sorry. It's okay. Wait, what happened? This mother roach just gave birth. She's a peppered roach. Archimandrita tessellata. And she just gave birth to a bunch of little babies. They're all very pale white right now because they're fresh. Grubs? Nope, they are little immature versions of the adult, but they'll shed their skin many times, get bigger each time. You should come look at them. The light's shining on them. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. 
You can like see through them. Yeah, they're transparent. You can see their digestive tract. Oh wow, they're even tinier in person. They look big on the camera. They're just little tiny babies. Mm -hmm. What the heck? You see the surface of the substrate moving underneath? It's like an earthquake. Yeah, there's another <laughs> larger nymph underneath the substrate that's starting to come their direction. Oh no, it's going to hurt the babies. Yeah. They're going to topple over. It is disturbing them. Oh, <laughs> did you see them? Mm -hmm. Are those eggs or are those, oh, those are heads. Are those heads? Yes, and so they're emerging from the egg case. She put out an egg case oh. in Oatheca, and they all come like out of that. laid them herself. Yeah. No, they have been developing inside of that egg case together. Oh. Some of them are nibbling on it. It's got some... Yo, do they eat some, it? Well, it's probably got some nutritive qualities. Vitamins, Ew. minerals. I'm sort of wondering what this other nymph underneath the substrate, this older nymph, is doing. What it's coming up here for. Do you see it now? It's right underneath the mother's abdomen. It's gonna eat them! I sort of wonder if it is going to. Um, wait, would it actually? Like that. Mm. It's not that big. I feel really like those not. are too big for it to eat. Do you no. see it? It's yeah, like right I see it, the but they're very soft-bodied right now, so I do worry a little bit. What the heck is it doing? It's probably just moving. Oh, no, there's so much more space. Like it, right. it, What the heck is... Ew! What? What is it doing? Oh, the female? Yeah. Um. Well, she's just given birth, and so her body is getting used to not having that egg case in there again. Um, okay, so like there's like literally like so many anchor acres, whatever, of land for that thing to crawl over. <laughs> I mean, it's acres for them, but not for us. But it had to choose that one spot. Just move, That's bro. Weird. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit the little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching.